Please join me in singing our opening hymn number 1007, We Are Building a New Way. We are building a new way. We are building a new way. We are building a new way, feeling stronger every day. We are building a new way. We are working. Welcome to the Community Church of Chapel Hill Unitarian Universalist Virtual Sunday Service. My name is Susan McDaniel. I'm a member of the Worship Associates Ministry here at the church. I want to welcome each of you to our Sunday online service. Whoever you are, whomever you love, however you came to worship with us today, you are welcome here. Our minister is the Reverend Tom Belote. However, this morning we have a guest speaker, Lisa Garcia Sampson. Lisa is the Executive Director of the Unitarian Universalist Justice Ministry of North Carolina. And this year she is leading our UU the Vote campaign. Lisa is in preliminary ministerial fellowship and will soon be ordained at her home congregation, First Unitarian Church of Providence. This is Lisa's third visit to our pulpit. Also today, we have a Within These Walls from the Spiritual Exploration for Adults. The Spiritual Exploration for Adults ministry team invites you to explore our course offerings for the fall. Please visit the church website for details. C has offerings across a wide range of topics, including a one session evening learning more about gender queer and gender non-conforming identities and experiences. Poetry as survival, the gift of written memories, building your own theology, and a one session evening on looking at mindfulness, three paintings to change the way you live. But today we want to highlight our church-wide 29-day racial equity challenge. Along with the Living Our Covenant with Intention Ministry, we are offering this important opportunity for our church community. Based on the 21-day challenge by Eddie Moore, this event 
challenges us all to a daily act to help us deepen our understanding of racism and work for racial equity. During the week, we will individually engage in common learnings, read the same article, watch a video, reflect, notice, and act. We will then meet in community over Zoom to reflect and discuss in facilitated small groups. The kickoff is this coming Thursday night, September 10th at 7 p.m. And this will be followed by three more group sessions. Then you may choose to join us for a special wrap-up session in which we celebrate the completion of the challenge and reflect on next steps. Sign up ends tomorrow, Monday, September 7th. Today's opening words are excerpts from the 13th, 14th, 15th, and 19th amendments to the Constitution of the United States. 13th, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. 14th Amendment. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of laws. Fifteenth, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. The Nineteenth Amendment, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Please join me in today's chalice reading, an excerpt from Looking Inward, Seeing Outward by Reginald Ray. It is undeniable that others and the larger world, so beleaguered at this moment in history, need everything that we have to give. But what to give is the problem. We cannot find out what to do simply by thinking about it. We need to gain our inspiration and our direction from much deeper sources. So where do we go, do we go from here? We believe that simple act of kindness
steady light that shines, showing us the way. We are the keepers of the flame, pushing back the darkness in our world today. So where do we go? go from here. Let love decide, not hate, not fear. No, 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 not fear. So don't you join us marching, banners held high. Moving forward from Each week, we hold in our service a time for sharing the joys and the sorrows that we bring to this community. This week, I'd like to place a few joys and sorrows that were sent to me. First stone that we place is placed on behalf of Kate Shipman. Kate asked that we place a stone for her friend, Lisa Anastasi, who lives in Maryland. Lisa's house burned down on August 23rd, and though there were no injuries, Lisa did lose all of her possessions in the fire. And so we hold Lisa in our hearts this morning. Kathy Farinola and Bill Vanke asked me to place this stone. They write, we are joyful and great grateful that after three COVID-related postponements, we were married yesterday in a family-only outdoor gathering. It was a beautiful day with our children and grandchildren who drove in from three states and whom we hadn't been able to see since Christmas. They continue, while we missed celebrating with our friends, we were grateful to include recorded music from Danny Gotham and the UU Ukes, bringing the loving spirit of our church community to this memorable day. Congratulations, Kathy and Bill. And I would just add that it was an immense joy to officiate at your wedding yesterday and to bless your marriage. I'd like to place a stone on behalf of Barbara Rodbell, Stone of Celebration. Barbara turned 95 on Friday, September 4th. I called her to wish her a happy birthday, and she said that she was having a great day, was glad to hear from her children, and that she was watching tennis. Please join me in wishing a very special birthday to Barbara, a very special member of our church community. I want to place a stone for a personal sadness, which is that a week ago, our family's cat, Emily, ran away and is still missing. And so we hold Emily 
and my family in our hearts. I place one stone as we do each week for all those joys and sorrows that were not spoken, which live in our hearts. Won't you join with me in a time of prayer? Dear source of light and life, amidst the joys and the sorrows of our beloved church, amidst the struggles of our community, and amidst the brokenness within our nation, we pause in prayer. Dear God, who teaches us to discern between truth and falsehood, may we look with eyes and hear with ears discerning a fact. May we contend with ignorance, confusion, obfuscation and denial. May we ever seek to know the truth and may that truth set us free. Dear God who teaches us reverence, may we honor sacrifice and commitment. May we hold in esteem those who make their lives a sacred gift to further the cause of liberation. May we recall humility, even as we seek out the resource of our own courage and purpose. Dear God, who reminds us of compassion, may we learn as well not only compassion for others, but compassion for ourselves, which is sometimes the hardest compassion. May we be easy with ourselves, for so much of what we are living through is hard. May we admit to frustration, sadness, being overwhelmed. Help us to be more honest with our feelings and ourselves. And empower us to the living of life with endurance for the struggle. And bless us ever with the hope of a new dawn. Amen. And blessed be. Use your imagination. 
swim. Everyone is listening. No one more so missing on the street without a home. Is there a place where there's no guarded borders, no toilet paper hoarders, no soldiers carving stone? No them against us. Nobody has to ride the back of the bus. Liberty and justice for all. Good morning. This morning's reading is actually a story. And the story is adapted from a Swedish folk tale and from Marcia Brown's retelling of the fable in her book, Stone Soup. There once was a traveler who came to a small village tired and weary from a long journey. The traveler didn't have anything to eat and hoped that a friendly villager would be able to feed him. So he came to a first house and knocked on the door and he asked the woman who answered if she could just spare a small amount of food for him, for he had just traveled a long journey and was very hungry. The woman looked at him regrettably and said, oh, I'm so sorry, but I have nothing to give you. You see, I can barely feed my own family. The traveler smiled at her, showing that he understood. And he walked away and went to the next door and again asked the same question, but the answer was the same. The next neighbor said, I'm so sorry, but I have nothing to give you. So he went from door to door to door to door, each time being turned away. But undaunted by this, the traveler went to the village square and he took a small tin cooking pot from his bag. He filled it with water, he started a fire, and he dropped a stone in the pot. As he boiled the water, a passing villager stopped by and asked him what he was doing. And the traveler replied, I'm making stone soup. Hey, do you want to join me? The villager said, yeah, sure. He said, hey, are carrots good in a stone soup? The traveler said, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So the villager ran home and returned with some carrots from his garden to add to the soup. Soon another curious villager came by and was invited to join them. She went home and returned with some potatoes. A young boy passed by and soon joined the group, bringing his mother's and his dinner plates from their home. In time, a crowd gathered, and everyone started offering their own favorite ingredients, mushrooms, onions, salt, pepper, acorn squash. Everyone wanted to be a part of the creation. And finally, the traveler removed the stone and declared that the soup was ready. And the whole community joined in a feast where there was none before. Gonna keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Never turning back. 
Si gamosa delante, siempre adelante, siempre adelante, si mover atrás, si mover atrás. It's really great to be back with you all today and uh, I was thinking about it this week and I realized that it's actually been exactly a year so Labor Day weekend exactly a year ago was the first time that I ever preached a community church um, yeah what a year it's been and the last time I was here was actually the first Sunday of January 2020 we had just rang in the new year and we were holding all of our hopes and our fears for 2020 and of course, little did we know what we were about to experience. So in February, the opportunity arose for me to take over as the executive director of Forward Together. So that's our UU Justice Ministry here in North Carolina. And I've got to be honest with you, uh, it's not the ministry that I ever imagined for myself. It's not the way I ever felt called to offer my gifts and my passions and service to this faith. 
But in jumping into this role in this year, I can honestly say that it has profoundly changed me, just as undoubtedly this election year slash pandemic slash racial justice awakening has changed all of us. In this year, since February, much of my time has been devoted to leading our UU The Vote campaign here in North Carolina. And if you're not familiar with what that is, UU The Vote is an unprecedented call to action across our faith to live into our values and engage in this year's electoral process. And so far, this faith has answered that call powerfully. This summer at General Assembly, UUs from our state joined UUs from across the country to make 114,000 phone calls to voters in four days. That's unbelievable. And I talked to our UU The Vote national lead this week, and she has let me know that we are well on our way to reaching our national goal this year of reaching out to one million voters. Not too bad for a small denomination, huh? And so far this year, our state has answered that call powerfully too. Within our network of congregations, we have already engaged 500 UUs across 16 congregations and nonpartisan voting work this year. We have phone banked, we have advocated for safe and fair elections, and we have written many, many, many postcards. Over 25,000 postcards, many to North Carolina voters who have been purged from the voting rolls this year. And well over 3,000 of those postcards have been written by you. This congregation, through the leadership of both Dana Lundquist and Joy Blevins. So now we have, it's unbelievable, we have 58 days as of today to the election. Eight weeks and six weeks to early voting. And there's so much more work to do. More people to register before the October 9th deadline, more poll workers to recruit, and more phone calls to make. Not just to strangers through phone banking, but to our friends and our family to make sure that everyone has a plan to vote. In this election, which is not only the most important, but by far the most complicated election of our lifetimes. And actually, to help us out in doing that today, after coffee hour, I'm going to be hosting a Voting 101 and Q&A session um, alongside Caitlin Metzger, who is the Deputy Director of You Can Vote. So she's going to have the answers, answers to all of your questions. You don't want to miss it. Hang out at coffee hour and right at noon, we'll get started. So that you can leave today making sure that you have all the info you need for not only your voting plan, but to make sure that you can assist others in having their plan too. But you, you the vote is about more than this election. It is about the larger vision of collective liberation. It's about this moment, this historical moment happening right now in our country which is embracing the interconnection of racial justice and environmental justice and our health and our livelihood, the survival of our democracy. It's about all of it. And one great example of that interconnection right here in your congregation is your 29-day racial equity challenge. And what I love about it is it combines a call to learning and reflection about race with a call to action to make phone calls to, to voters during our Forward Together weekly phone banking party. And so this Thursday, I got to hang with a lot of you who showed up to work alongside UUs from Seattle and New York, Virginia, Maryland, All Souls DC, to make phone calls to North Carolina voters in partnership with the NAACP. And so we need everybody in the game now. Because in case you haven't heard, if your congregation reaches your challenge goal of 60 hours, your beloved RE director, Marion, is gonna dye her hair, the color voted on by this congregation. I love this idea. This is democracy in action in more ways than one. And just so you know, I've heard that purple is in the lead, blue is close behind, stay tuned.
Of course, it's important to name that the magnitude of this moment is overwhelming. I know that we are scared and tired and heartbroken. Let's just tell the truth about that. That's real. That's alive in our bodies right now. But despite all of that, we are called to meet this moment with a deep faith and creativity and spirit of abundance. And that is what we hear in our story of the stone soup this morning. So in the story, the tired and hungry traveler strolls into town and hopes that someone will offer him food. But at first, the people in the village say, I don't have anything to give you. Similar to our culture today, they were responding from a place of fear and scarcity. They said, hey, I'm barely holding it together myself. But the traveler, here's the key, the traveler had faith, a faith in the town's collective abundance, a faith that the town actually had, it, had everything it needed to nourish one another. If only they could gather around the fire and watch the soup simmer until they themselves experienced a spark of imagination and gratitude. Friends, justice movements, large and small justice movements, are like a stone soup. You don't start with, with an exact plan and all the ingredients you need. You just start. You kindle the fire and drop the stone in the water. And you believe that people will gather. And in being together, we spark each other's imagination and create a larger vision and offer our gifts and our capacity. My job now is to be tuned in to all the beautiful justice work that's happening across our state right now. And I can honestly say that one of the most powerful examples of this in action is your church's immigrant justice initiative. It began with this church answering the call to provide sanctuary several years ago, and you are now accompanying five asylum seekers who are living in the manse. And I have the privilege of working with your team a little bit this year, and they have inspired me with their ability to navigate this rapidly shifting dynamic of immigration in our country with resourcefulness and perseverance and love. And they didn't begin with everything they need. In fact, they still don't have everything they need. And we have a share of the plate coming up. So please donate generously because they need our money now. But all along the way for these years that this immigrant justice initiative has been evolving and growing and responding, they have had faith in the collective abundance of their incredible team and of this larger congregation and the growing circle of people offering their own contrib contributions to this essential ministry. Recently, I came across a wonderful diagram from a lawyer and activist, Deepa Iyer. And it lays out all the different roles that are critical in a social change ecosystem. And I want to share them with you. We need builders, healers, activists, artists, storytellers, bridge builders, frontline responders, caregivers, disruptors, visionaries. Perhaps one of those roles spoke to you. And it's important that we be attuned to our gifts and our roles and sharpen those gifts because that's how we can be in service to the movement. 
And this community is filled with so many contributions to this great stone soup of movement. Donna brings stories and Eric writes songs and Ruth bakes cakes and Salem takes notes and Atticus asks us, asks us hard questions. That is movement. You know, it's like, it's like the justice version of your church's performance of Shrek the Musical. I went to see that show and I remember what it felt like to be in that sanctuary. That's what loving justice movements feel like too. The budget is small, the vision is huge, but somehow you all pull it off. Because when the community comes together, anything is possible. And with that being said, we also know that we can't be too rigid in our understanding of our gifts and roles because a, a movement is constantly changing and evolving, and so are we. Being a part of a movement is constantly, is a constant negotiation and discernment that occurs not on our own, but in relationship to that collective. While standing around the fire and while watching new ingredients be added to the soup, we ask, what can I add? We must be malleable and open to change. Maybe you identified as a healer or a storyteller, but are called to expand your sense of all the many, many ways in, way you, in which you may live into that role based on the needs of the movement right now, as a phone banker or a fundraiser or a social media lead. And sometimes like this work is just gonna call you to go beyond your comfort zone and embrace a different role altogether. And in doing so, you will evolve in your understanding of who you are. I bet some of you who phone banked on Thursday never imagined playing that role in the movement. But you push beyond your comfort zone because you know that that is what is desperately required right now. And Marion, I bet you... <laughs> I bet you never expected that one of your contributions to the movement would be your willingness to dye your hair purple, right? We don't know what's going to be asked of us. And that's the fun of it. In January, when I was here last, we talked about the tipping point. Friends, this is it. This is the movement we dreamed of. No, scratch that. This is the movement we couldn't have even dreamed of. And what's happening right now is a stone soup. It emerged out of a deep, aching hunger for liberation and a belief in one another. That we can gather around the fire of community and let it spark our imagination and hear it call our name. Hear it call out for our contributions to this sacred unfolding recipe. And though we are scared and heartbroken and bone tired, this is our chance. This is it. And we cannot let this moment slip away. I wanna leave you with this question. What if we actually have everything we need? What if the capacity to transform this country or already exists among us and within us? And the only thing that is stopping us is our faith in one another and our faith in ourselves. Let this last 58 days before the election be a communion. In this moment where it is so tempting to be driven by fear and scarcity, let us embody abundance and love and generosity. And when we do, the table will overflow with all that we are and all that we can be. And our faith will be deepened and our spirits transformed. 
and together we will create a liberating movement beyond our wildest imagination. May it be so. Amen. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle around to tend these vines. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within. Please join with me in the words by which we extinguish the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Now please join in singing Shalom. <laughs> 